And uh, all of a sudden, my I, I noticed first that it was just unnaturally quiet. And then right as I noticed that, my brother's friend goes, guys, guys, guys. And I look over to him and my brother looks over to him and we follow his gaze up and up above the, the tree line, uh, about 30 feet above. I mean, it's hard to tell how far it was, but against the, the dark blue of the night sky, um, you could see a black triangle. And I remember I brought it up the next time I was at a family gathering, I brought it up and my brother remembered it too. And uh, we remembered it the same way, this series of events leading to the discovery of, you know, the, the Nazi base in Antarctica and uh, just kind of following the, the UFO lore of, of that time and kind of putting it into a action adventure. I want it to, I want it to be well-researched. The following is my conversation with Christopher Romrell. Chris is a Hollywood stuntman, actor, and writer. Chris has been a stuntman in films like Avengers, Creed II, Watchmen, Extraction, Terminal List, Black Adam, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Chris has been Chris Hemsworth's stunt double and now appears in many of Chris Pratt's movies as his stunt double in many of the films that we watch today. An awesome day job to have, in my opinion. Chris shares with me a little about his work, his new project he's been working on, uh, which is an extraterrestrial element, and his sighting as a child, along with his older brother, of a large triangle UFO in Colorado. A fascinating guy and a pleasure to talk to. So, the following is my conversation with Christopher Romrell. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for um for for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, if it's okay, I just want to first of all sort of start. I'm 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 super super keen. I'll be honest. I've been I've been sort of stalking through your Instagram account. It's like my heart has only just settled from all the adrenaline <laughs> from the from the, the stunts and stuff. I'm, I'm I want to talk about that if that's okay. But first of all, we're going to sort of just jump in and what first kind of piqued your interest in the UFO UAP subject. You know, when I was uh I was nine, I was uh living in Littleton, Colorado. This had to have been, uh, man, 2000, no, not 2000, sorry, 1997. Uh, me, my older brother and my older brother's friend, I was kind of a tag along. We were out, we were kind of like latchkey kids. So it was out past dark. Um, and we were walking down the street and uh, all of a sudden my, I, I noticed first that it was just unnaturally quiet. And then right as I noticed that, my brother's friend goes, guys, guys, guys. And... I look over to him and my brother looks over to him and we follow his gaze up and up above the the tree line uh, about 30 feet above. I mean, it's hard to tell how far it was, but against the the dark blue of the night sky, um, you could see a black triangle. And it was, I mean, someone very strong might have been able to throw a rock at it. I don't know exactly how far it was, but it seemed pretty close, like maybe a block or two over. Um, and we sat there and we watched it hover there silently and each, each corner, there was like a dull glowing light. And it was almost like, uh, I didn't see the center light. Some people say they see a center light, but I just saw one in each corner. And, uh, it was like, uh, if you've ever had those glow in the dark, sticky stars that you put on your ceiling, yeah, you know, they're charged up and then over time they lose their glow and you can only kind of see them if you like not looking directly at them. That's what the glow looked like. And, uh, and it slowly just drifted past the tree line to where we couldn't see it anymore. And, uh, and that's it. I, uh, I honestly don't know if there's more to the story as I've been uh, kind of researching for a script I'm writing. Uh, I've, I've interviewed a bunch of, uh, you know, contactees and abductees and stuff. And they, uh, you know, each one I've told that to, they're kind of like, well, there might be more to that. If you've seen something, there might be more to that. So Wow. So, so, so say again, so you were how old, how old at the time? So I was, uh, man, let's see. I'd have been, oh, no, I know. I think I said I was nine, but I was probably closer to seven. Okay. And did yeah. you, so you saw this with some of your friends and have you has sort of talked about it since? Yeah. You know what? I never brought it up again with my brother or, I mean, we moved away from uh, Colorado not too long afterwards and I kind of just forgot about it uh until many years later when i was uh watch and 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 i never really followed the ufo subject 
too much. Uh, and I always just thought that, you know, UFOs were saucers. They were all, they were all circles. So what I saw had to have been military of some kind. And then um, I was watching the X-Files, you know, and in the opening credits, they have a triangle UFO. Uh, and I was like, whoa, that's what I saw. That's like, it just unlocked this memory for me. And uh, I was like, whoa, oh yeah. And I remember I brought it up the next time I was at a family gathering, I brought it up and my brother remembered it too. And uh, we remembered it the same way. And so that was like, okay, wow, this did happen to us, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, that's crazy. And so did you, did it, I, I know you said that you sort of didn't think too much about it until watching the the, the, the TV show X-Files, but did it have any kind of effect on you at all going forward? Did you ever, you know, did it, did it, was there anything in your life that kind of you felt like it changed or did it not really have much because of your age at the time? And how did it I mean, you? I, I think it's probably hard to tell because, you know, it happened early in life. Uh, but I think one of the things that really left me with was this idea that uh, there's more out there. Uh, there's stuff that we don't understand, or at least some of us don't understand, and that uh, basically anything is possible. And uh, I grew up in a, in a pretty high demand religion and, uh, you know, left that religion. And I think that was kind of the seed that did it for me was kind of just there was uh, there's always more uh, that we don't know. Um, so, I, yeah, that definitely was like a, an open minded. It yeah. left me with an open mind. Yeah. So let me just um, just because I'm super fascinated. How did you get into sort of stunt work and film and, and, and where did that all start? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, always wanted to get into film. I uh, always loved making dumb movies with my friends, you know, whether it was uh, we, we used to do it on camcorders, you know, with the tapes and then you put them in the VCR and we'd edit them that way. Uh, and I ended up falling in love with uh, Dragon Ball Z and got into martial arts and uh, met some of my best friends there. And they also wanted to be filmmakers and we wanted to follow Jackie Chan's career, basically be stunt guys you know, into filmmakers and make it awesome action films the way that he did. And so uh, we started doing that. We started just making our own little films and we, we kind of came up that way. And uh, we grew up in Utah. Uh, I mean, I moved from Colorado to Utah and then uh, from Utah, I, you know, started doing this stuff and uh, we started working on low budget, no budget stuff out there, student films. Uh, there's a lot of really fun uh, filmmakers out there who are doing just cool stuff. And so we got to we got to build a good stunt reel out there because we were the only stunt guys in Utah, right? And uh, and I got noticed by uh, some people in in Hollywood, and I have a a resemblance to uh, Chris Pratt. You know, we have the same dimensions. You know, from certain angles, we look the same. So things just really worked out for me. I got very lucky, and I got pulled from Utah to go work on uh, Avengers: Infinity War. And uh, from there, uh, Chris basically plugged me and he's like, all right, you're my guy from now on. So now when he goes on a show, I'm on a show. And uh, yeah, it's been a good ride. Very grateful for it. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, I mean, that must be a, a, a fascinating day at work for you. <laughs> Just It's not bad. It doesn't suck. Do you get do you get injured often? You know, what's funny is I've never been injured on a show. I've only been injured in training. Um, you know, cause it's in training that's where we push ourselves. That's where we're kind of trying to see where the, where the edge is, how, how can we make this look even gnarly or even cooler, even more dynamic. Um, and so that's when I'm pushing on myself, but when I'm working on a show, the whole mantra is safety. You know, we got to be able to do this 10 times and not get anybody in the hospital. So there's a lot of uh, really cool tricks that have been developed over the years. It's not like it used to be. I mean, back in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, those guys had to be tough as nails. We didn't have the uh, the same, you know, uh, computer graphic systems and, you know, pneumatic winch systems that we have today. It's it's a cushy job now. What's um what's it what's it like in your industry for for the kind of UFO UAP subject? Do people talk about it? Is it sort of still a taboo subject, or or how do you, how do you kind of find it, or do people just not really talk about it? I think that I mean I talk about it all the time. Uh, I I shoehorn it into every conversation because <laughs> that's just like what I'm my obsession right now with this script. Uh, but um. I think it's just like any other subset of people, you know, there's people that are like, yeah, I saw one when blah, blah, blah. And there's people that are like, 
yeah, that sounds cool, man. That's cool that you're into that stupid stuff, you know? Uh, so it's just, you know, I'm sure you encounter this kind of the whole gamut. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what do you make of what's happening in Congress at the moment then? So we've got last few days they've been in the house talking about, I don't know if you're following it, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah talking about the UAP Disclosure Act and the Schumer and Rounds Amendments and stuff. And it looks like they've come to some kind of agreement, but it's slightly watered down. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. have they come to an agreement? I thought they shot the whole thing down. Was that, uh, I was just reading yeah. headlines. I haven't yeah, read into every, it. Every hour, it seems to be a new kind of update. Yeah. It's killed to know it's still alive, to it's killed, to it's still alive, but it's changed, to it's watered down. So I don't know. The last update that I've um, I've read uh, is that it's it seems to have been pushed through to kind of the next state. I mean, I'm I, I'll be honest, I'm yeah. not hundred percent up with you know, American politics, but it seems to have gone to kind of a almost a resolution where they've kind of agreed on something. Mm. It's not ideal. It's been watered down somewhat. Um, and there's a few bits like imminent domain and uh, this panel of people that will assess the data yeah. um, has has changed back to kind of the the sort of intel committees and the. Um, um, yeah, so it's slightly different in who gets to decide what's disclosed. Um, Interesting, but yeah, so I I I don't know what's going to come from that. Potentially, the, in theory, this is should be disclosing information. So if we had trust in the government that they would follow this step by step, then we might get some stuff disclosed. I guess. Well, they have a really good track record with uh, doing <laughs> what they say they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. So there, there is that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's so what do you what's your kind of feeling of it do you I, i'm interested in people's kind of take on why we're kind of where we are because if we go back a you know only three or four years this wasn't really discussed it was kind of on mm. the fringes it was on cable tv you know it was on those weird ufo accounts like mine um but it wasn't really sort of talked about um kind of openly certainly in the media without mm. kind of making a joke out of it but it's changed quite significantly what what do you make of that do you think there's a reason for that or yeah, I think that there's it? a I think that there's a pretty easily definable reason for that, in my opinion. And I think that's COVID. You know, I think that uh, we went through COVID and we saw how poorly that was handled by world governments. We saw the the manipulation, the lying of the information, the just there was a bunch of stuff that like, you know, now it's like people don't know what to believe. You know, was this how do, how do we we don't know what to make of this. We just don't believe the news. We don't believe, you know, our politicians. Um, and so it's this deep mistrust of kind of the line. And I think that led a lot of people into, you know, conspiracy theories and conspiracy theories. They all overlap. And so I think a lot of new people discovered that UFOs and there's a lot of there's a lot of really good information on UFOs. It's not just like. You know, it's not just nonsense. There's a lot of nonsense, but there's a lot of stuff that's uh, that's very solid. And so I think with that kind of, you know, COVID opening people's minds, more people discovering this topic, it's kind of started to snowball. And I think that's where we are with the disclosure uh, idea right now is that as that gains popularity, you got these congressmen who now have to weigh you know, what's more important, uh, you know, uh, the re-election and, and, and staying in Congress versus making all the people who line my pockets happy, you know? Um, so I think as more and more people jump on this wagon, I think that pressure will definitely lean more in to the side of disclosure. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. And it's, um, it's, a, it's such an interesting um, change of events and to see the government, you know, talking about stuff that's just, it's, it's wild to me. I mean, you know, like I say, going back only a few years, I wouldn't dream of seeing some of the press conferences and some of the sort of congressmen people coming forward and saying, this is what I've seen. And I think, yeah, you know, a couple that I'd seen uh, quite recently saying that they'd, they'd been provided documents. I think it was Matt Gates or some, I think it was Matt Gates had come and said, I went to an Air Force base and a pilot showed me some foot, uh, footage or a photograph, I believe. And, you know, yeah. something that I've never seen before and not something that we have around. I mean, that's crazy language. It really is. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. What's um? So, what's your? So you've got a you're working on a script at the moment. Are you all right? Are you yeah. able to talk about it? Is that? Yeah. I mean, I I can talk about it. Uh, so it's kind of a an action adventure, and uh, it's basically following um uh, the big MacGuffin. The thing they're after is this uh, Nazi UFO, right? So in in my version of events, in about 1933, uh, Germany got its hands on UFO technology, and they were able to 
kind of make that happen through kind of occult means. And uh, that goes missing after the war. But we see, you know, uh, the U.S. snatches up scientists, the U.K. snatches up scientists, Russia starts sna snatching up scientists. And uh, in that process, we realize that we've, we're missing something. We're missing some some of their biggest breakthroughs. And uh, and then uh, my story picks up in kind of like the 60s. So, you know, 20 years after the war, uh, or at least World War II, um, there's a scientist in uh, Eastern eastern germany you know he's uh he can't he can't visit the west but he claims to have worked on this thing and so uh the cia has to send somebody in to go find this guy and that sets off this this series of events leading to the discovery of you know the the nazi base in antarctica and uh just kind of following the the ufo lore of of that time and kind of putting it into a action adventure i want it to i want it to be well researched in a way that kind of like a Dan Brown novel is, you know, uh, he wrote uh, the Da Vinci code where it just feels like when you're reading, it's like, that could happen. Wait, yeah. that could happen. And they get people uh, interested and they start reading up on it. It's like, Whoa, you know, kind of a creating a new, uh, a new lore for it. So that's the idea. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Well, I look forward to, to, to hearing more about that. That's that. that yeah. That's um, I, I love that sort of stuff. This sort of, the, the the fun kind of creative um movies that get people to think is that real and then they look back and go yeah there's a lot of stuff in some of these films that are little kind of nuggets little um little easter eggs so to speak where people go back and um i mean i've had that with throughout my kind of life where i've seen things and um films where storylines kind of take you down to actually that happened and that's that's yeah online, you know that's online there's news news clippings from yeah you know, 30 40 years 40 years back where yeah you know, if you read uh tom DeLong's secret machines i had that experience reading that book where it was like this narrative that kind of weaves together these different famous ufo incidents and i'm like oh that's cool and i'd start I'd google stuff as i was reading i, I just really enjoyed that absolutely yeah, I do some some real rabbit hole, deep sort of deep dives and and, and internet binges. <laughs> oh yeah, um, as, as you can probably imagine in this account. But yeah, it's um crazy stuff. So, what what do you think? I know it's a it's a it's sort of quite speculative and a bit of a broad question. But if we were to get disclosure, if the government were to come out and say, you know, the UAP disclosure act's been um, signed into law, we have to tell you this, we're disclosing this, and something within those documents says we're not alone there is non-human intelligence out there it is i don't know extraterrestrial interdimensional whatever they come out with how can you see that affecting affecting us how how do you see it affecting us i'm kind of interested in what what people's takes are on how the next day what, what life would be like for us yeah have you ever thought about that yeah i mean i think that it really depends on what the information means right like I, I think we're all conditioned that there is life out there I, I think even you know the the most fundamental christians would have you know not a hard time accepting that because it's just it's in our it's 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 everywhere and i think it's just it's ingrained in us now so i don't think that would be a big issue what i think would be a big issue is you know uh if you know, the concept is that it's the prison planet kind of theory or, you know, if it's something like that, yeah. right, where, uh, you know, basically everything you're doing is meaningless kind of a thing uh, that uh, that would not make people feel good and it would collapse society because why would you have to why would you do anything if everything is, you know, so meaningless? So I can see it being if if, if there is a reason that might be a good one, you know, for not disclosing it. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would make absolute sense. And there's got to be some. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, the way I look at it, there's there's certainly sort of financial incentives I would expect. You know, if we if we oh, yeah. accept the premise that this is real, then there's certainly a financial aspect to it. You know, if we think about military um, contracts and things like that. But I suspect oh, yeah. there's probably also that sort of philosophical um societal thing where people are people in those positions are considering themselves patriotic well actually we're doing this for for the best you know this is for the best and i don't i don't disbelieve that that's potentially an option that, that they think that i think that right those thing. i think that those both can be true you know i think that it's a multifaceted reason i think that there's special interests that don't want this out for personal gain and i think that there's people that don't want this out for ideological gain and for religious reasons i think it's just it's a it's a mess of reasons i think and the only one reason that uh we should is 
because I think we're entitled to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look, Chris, um, thanks so much for your time. Look, um, I'm, I've, uh, I appreciate you're a busy chap and I really, really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to me um, today. It's a really interesting conversation and you're such a super interesting guy. I, I'm just like oh, I say, you. Sh- sh- you know, shooting through you, I do some research um, for, for, for guests pr- prior to them coming on and, and have a bit of a deep dive and I kind of I'm quite jealous. I'd like to have your your, your <laughs> crazy life. I don't know if my my bones would. I recently had surgery on my shoulders. So I don't know if I'd I'd <laughs> survive it. But um, oh, you can do it, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, it looks like a lot of fun. Well, look, take care of yourself, man. Hopefully, um, hopefully we'll stay in touch and um, yeah, please do. Keep kicking ass, man, and good luck with your um, good luck with your 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 show. Is it so? Is it, is it screenplay writing? You say or yeah, screenplay right now. It's just a you know on spec means you know nobody's nobody's body yet but one day let's yeah. go i'm gonna make it as it so is it finished or are you still working on it no i'm working on that one i have a uh, i just shot a short a uh, uh a short version of it um that uh i'm gonna be screening in january uh to kind of get funding for the big one cool. awesome okay chris well take care of yourself man and thanks again i really appreciate your time Go on, dude. Thank you for having me. Thank you, man. Cheers, Chris. See ya.